Hello, we are now in part three of the demand and supply question and answer session. I am your host, Elias Muwau. Now, uh, let me quickly take you through what we uh, presented in part one and part two. The demand and supply functions of a commodity are given by P is equal to negative 2QD plus 60, which is our demand function, and P being equal to 0 0.5 QS plus 30, which happens to be our supply function, where P, QD, and QS denotes the price in Zambian Kwacha, quantity demanded, and quantity supplied, respectively. Now, in part one and part two, we looked at the determination of the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. We also sketched the demand curve and supply curve and also showed the equilibrium price and quantity on the diagram. In addition, when we went to part two, we, uh, we computed the consumer surplus, we computed the producer surplus, as well as the total surplus. In this uh, uh, video, in, which is part three, we want to determine the effect on the market equilibrium if the government decides to impose a fixed tax of five quacha on each good. In addition, we want to find the deadweight loss associated with the tax in uh, the first part there above. Now, this deadweight loss is simply the loss in the welfare that accrues to nobody in the market. So we will explain it further when computing the deadweight loss. For now, let's go straight into uh, analyzing how our uh, functions above can be affected by the imposition of a tax. So uh, we've already illustrated this question. So now remember that before the tax, the price, the supply function was P equal to 0 0.5 QS plus 30. Now, remember that when we are in equilibrium, the price that buyers pay will equal the price that sellers, uh, the, uh, sellers are receiving for supplying their commodity, meaning that the equilibrium price uh, will be equal for both the buyers and the sellers. Now, when there is a tax imposed on the market, it means that the price that buyers will be paying will not be the same amount that sellers will be receiving for their commodities. Now, be, because of that, sellers are receiving a price P minus the tax. So, which means that in this case, our tax is 5. The price that the buyers are going to pay for a commodity will be equal to P. But the price that the sellers are going to receive for their commodity will be less the tax that they have to remit to the uh, government. So, with that then, our supply function after the tax will be P minus 5. Now, this 5 here is the tax that is imposed on a commodity. When the sellers receive the price P from the buyers, they will have to remove 5 kwacha and remit it as tax to the government. Where with this then, we are seeing that uh, the price that the buyers are paying is not, the equal, is not equal to the price that sellers are keeping because they have to remove five kwacha and pay to the government as taxation for a unit sold. So we see that the right hand side here, nothing is affected. So when the, uh, the function uh, is uh, presented in such a way that quantity supplied is a function of price. And if you can get confused with that, please make sure you make P the subject of the formula and then we can uh, do what we are doing here. So we are subtracting five from the price and then keeping the right hand side uh, constant. So nothing is changing there. From here, we can simplify this supply function by taking negative five to the other side of uh, the equation so that we remain with P this side, which will be equal to 0 0.5 QS. Okay, 0 0.5 QS then plus, we have our 30 here. And then since this negative five has gone this, uh, this other side, it will become uh, positive. So we'll have plus five. When I add this, what I'll have is 0 0.5 uh, QS plus 35. 
So just to uh, show clearly how this will be, so what we we'll have then in our function is that our p will be equal to 0.5 qs plus 35. Now by now I'm sure you are familiar that uh, this 35 then becomes the vertical uh, the value on the vertical intercept. And if we have to find the value on the horizontal intercept, which is the value of quantity when price is zero, what we'll have is that we'll have to put zero where there is P and make QS the subject of the formula. And if we do that, we're going to find negative 70. So meaning that our vertical intercept will be a 0, 0,35, while our horizontal intercept will be negative 70,0. Okay, so now let's try and find now our new equilibrium price and our new equilibrium quantity after the imposition of a tax. In equilibrium, we noted that quantity demanded will be equal to quantity supplied, which will basically be equal to, the, uh, to Q, just quantity, because they are equal. So with that then, we can equate our demand function of negative 2Q plus 60 to our supply function of 0.5Q plus 35. And from here, we can rearrange so that we, we put the Qs on one side and the constants on the other side. So that what we'll have then is 60 minus 35 because this 35 then will go to the other side and become negative. While this post, uh, negative 2Q will go to the other side and become positive 2. And when we simplify this, 0.5Q plus 2Q, we will have 2.5Q and 60 minus 35 we will have 25 so 2.5 q will be equal to 25 when i divide through by 2.5 so that i get the value of q what i'll have is that my q will be equal to 10 because 25 divided by 2.5 will be equal to 10. now we have our equilibrium quantity after the imposition of a tax what we need now is to find the equilibrium price after the imposition of the tax so for us to find our equilibrium price, we need to uh, plug this quantity, this value of Q, into either the demand function or the new supply function. Take note. We are not using this supply function for us to find the new equilibrium uh, uh, price. We are using the new supply function. The supply function that uh, takes into consideration the value or the amount of the tax which is P equal to 0 0.5 QS plus 35. So what I'll do, I'll start first by using the demand function and then we can verify the equilibrium price by using the new supply function. Let's start with the demand function. So given our demand function P equal to negative 2 QD plus 60, we know that our quantity is 10, so we are going to put 10 where there is quantity so that our equation will be P equal to negative 2 multiplied by 10 and then plus 60. Negative 2 times 10 will be negative 20 and then we add the 60 such that negative 20 plus 60 will end up giving us 40. Meaning that our equilibrium price after the imposition of a tax will be 40 kwacha. We can verify this by using our new supply function. That is the supply function that takes into consideration the tax or that puts, uh, that uh, incorporates the tax. This supply function that I've circled here. So we're going to use this supply function to verify that indeed the equilibrium price is equal to 40 kwacha. Okay, so with my new supply function P equal to 0 0.5 QS plus 35, we know that quantity is equal to 10. So we're going to put 10 where there is quantity so that we have 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 plus 35. 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 is equal to 5. So I'll have 5 plus 35, which will end up giving me 40. Meaning, and, meaning that clearly we can see that indeed 40, uh, 40 kwacha is the equilibrium price and 10 units is the equilibrium quantity. Let's now go to the diagram uh, so that we see what effect uh, this uh, uh, new tax has on the market. Because what we want to determine is the effect on the market equilibrium if the government decides to impose a fixed tax of 5 kwacha on each good. So we start with our 
the uh, price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis and our initial demand and supply functions if you remember from part uh, one and part two we had our equilibrium price of 36 and equilibrium quantity of 12. if you remember from uh, part two the bottom part here was the producer surplus and uh, the top part here is what we call the consumer surplus now from our new supply function we've noted that when a fixed tax of five quarter is imposed on a commodity the intercept for the supply curve will change to 35 from the 30 meaning that uh, the uh, our supply curve will go up this side and we should also recall from the determinants of a supply that when the government imposes a tax on a commodity the supply will reduce and therefore the supply curve will shift up and to the left. In other words, the supply curve will shift in this direction of the arrow. Now, with our vertical intercept or from our new supply function of 35, we note that since the intercept, the uh, slope of the function has not changed, the shift in the supply curve will be a parallel shift. So our supply curve will shift in the new position to that direction. So now that we have our new supply function, it will be nice for us then to determine what our equilibrium price and our equilibrium quantities are. We've already calculated that our equilibrium price will be equal to 40, so we know that our equilibrium price then will increase from 35 to 40. In our equilibrium quantity, we noted that equilibrium quantity will be 10, meaning that equilibrium quantity will reduce from 12 to 10. So therefore, the effect of uh, a fixed tax of five quarter on the on the market equilibrium is that the price equilibrium price will increase by four from 36 to 40 quarter while our equilibrium quantity will reduce by two from 12 units to 10 units let's now answer the second uh, uh question we want to find the deadweight loss associated with the tax now deadweight loss is simply the loss in the welfare of either the consumers or the producers or both the consumers and the producers that accrues to nobody. From this diagram, we note that the blue region here is the consumer surplus, while the red region here is the producer's surplus. If our odd equilibrium price was 36 and our odd equilibrium quantity was 12 and that after the imposition of the tax, our new equilibrium price goes to 40. It means that from this 40, the buyers are now buying 10 units. And at that uh, 10 units, we also note that consumers, uh, producers, will also be supplying the 10 units. And we also remember that the price that the buyers are paying of 40 is not the same amount that sellers are going to keep for a commodity sellers will have to subtract 5 from the 40 because that 5 has to be remitted as a tax to the government. So from this diagram, we note that since the price is at 40 and quantity is at 10, this part here will be uh, cut off from the welfare. This is a region that will have been lost and will go to nobody. So the consumers are going to lose this blue part here. So that blue part will be chopped off from the consumer's welfare and it will be the deadweight loss for the consumer or the deadweight loss associated with the loss in welfare from the consumers. Then this red part here will be the deadweight loss associated with the, uh, the producers. So it will be the loss in welfare that will be accounted for from the producers. So now that we have identified our deadweight loss, so this is the area that we need to find. This is the deadweight loss. The total deadweight loss will be deadweight loss from the consumer plus the deadweight loss from the producer. It is very easy for us to determine or to obtain the deadweight loss from the consumer because we have all the values that we need. We know our, our height here will be 4 and we know that our base here will be 2. But for the producer, we do not know what this price will be at the point where the quantity of 10 corresponds or meets the uh, supply function, which is the odd supply function. To find that value, we need to get this 10, which is the new quantity that uh, we have on the market, and plug it into the odd supply function. 
because the old supply function is the one that represents the suppliers. The new one represents the suppliers plus the tax from the government. So we are going to get the 10 and put it where there's QS here. When we put uh, 10 here, what we'll have is that 0 0.5 times 10 will be uh, 5, and 5 plus 30 will be 35, meaning that that point there corresponds to 35. Now that we have both uh, the uh, base and height from the producer surplus as well as from the consumer surplus, we can find our deadweight loss. What I'll do here is that I'll take the whole triangle the way it is and find the area of this triangle. And that area will be the deadweight loss. So from there, deadweight loss will be equal to half base times height. I'll take my base to be this part here. So my base will be five and my height in this case will be two. So in that case, then we're saying that uh, deadweight loss will be equal to half five which is the difference between the price that the buyers are paying and the price that the sellers will keep after removing the tax. So that will be equal to five. And then the height is a difference between the old equilibrium quantity and the new equilibrium quantity, which is two. So we have this there. When we simplify two into two, what we we'll have is one. So we we'll have five multiplied by one and my deadweight loss or our deadweight loss will be equal to five. So this is how we find the deadweight loss. And from the uh, diagram here, we've illustrated that this region here represents the deadweight loss, which is the loss in the welfare of producers and consumers that accrues to no player in the market that we have uh, illustrate, uh, uh, found so far. Okay, so now I'll uh, end here. Um, I'm still continuing in part four. Please find time to watch uh, part four where we're going to look at uh, uh, the uh, regions that will remain after this uh, intervention by the government. Where we're going to find the new consumer surplus. We're going to look at what is the loss in the consumer surplus after the, uh, the imposition of the tax. We're going to find the government revenue. We're going to find the loss in total surplus and so on. So join me in the second session. So thank you very much for watching. In case you have questions, please send an email to muaoelias at gmail.com. If there are areas where you want me to help you with a video, with a lecture session uh, recorded, uh, recordable, please write me an email and I'll be able to record a video for you and upload it on YouTube. I'll see you in part four. And remember to subscribe to the channel Elias Muau so that you get automated updates for all the videos that I will be uploading on YouTube.